a modern day recreation of Shackleton's voyage. It's fish on. It's a big trainer. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30 foot, 50 year old sailing boat, Marul. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. We'd spent several days cooped up inside Marul in stormy and wet conditions. And without any heating on the boat, we decided to return to the southeastern coast of Tasmania. So we're just leaving this spot where we've been hanging out in for a bit of a storm for the last 24 hours. Come and check out how much we've been swinging around with the gusts on the anchor. We'd set out early in the morning, motoring our way out of Port Davey in the calms so that we could use the forecast westerly winds for our return passage. Well, it was one of those kind of days today. So we had uh, we had westerlies forecast, 10 to 15 knots. That didn't happen at all. There was no wind. And then we got a Kraken tuna. It's fish on. <laughs> back to the boat and then it must have just nicked the, the hull somewhere and um, right at the last minute the, uh, the line just let go and if we look at it no little squiggly lines anything like that just a just a perfect <laughs> looks like a knife cut there it was a bit tragic really because that the you could see that there was quite a bit of blood coming out of that fish, so I think it had been nicked in the throat. So, killed it for nothing really. 
it's how it feels. I know it's you know it wasn't deliberate, but just any time that sort of thing happens, it sort of bums me out a bit. That's why we don't fish for fun, you know. We sort of just fish to eat, but we lose one with you know a nice tuna like that. <laughs> it hurts a bit. It hurts for him. Well, there we go. I've just had my little bit of fish morning. Um, we got a we got a weather report, and so it's all changed now. So it's no longer <laughs> it's no longer ten to fifteen Westleys. What it is now is just variables. Um, but what the forecast is is before dawn um, for the winds to be southwest, twenty five knots, and they're they're calling a strong wind warning for tomorrow. So we're on the southern coast of Tassie. And I don't really want to be in strong winds from the southern quadrant. So, even though there's not much wind at the moment, we've got 40 miles to go around back to Recherche Bay. So we might just have a little dinner here, and then we'll do that. You just really have to respect strong wind warnings here in um, on the <laughs> on the bottom of the world. It feels like so. There's, um, there's a four metre swell building up and there's no real, all of these are sort of open roadstead anchorages. So it's not, not really our sort of deal. So we're just gonna have something to eat and we'll kick on. After an overnight sail and a couple of days sheltering at anchor in Reshesh Bay, we were on the move again to pick up supplies from Dover. Well, this isn't uh, a modern day recreation of Shackleton's voyage, despite how I'm dressed. We've just got a, um, a low pressure system to our south and an oncoming high pressure system. It's, it's just bringing an airstream that just feels like it's just straight out of the Southern Ocean. It is so cold for me. Um, so we've come back here. It's 70 miles back from the West Coast. We've just come back for, a, we want to pick up a few extra spares. We've had a look at the news. Things are going a little bit crazy there. So we're anticipating some shortages of, some way down the road so we just got to we need to stock up on um well engine servicing stuff there's a little bit of uncertainty so we just want to be sure that we can keep the boat running so we've come back we're going to practice our social distancing what is it like keep everyone at arm's length Sailing around this part of the channel requires close attention to the charts as there are some pretty significant surf breaks. With our engine spares collected from Dover, we decided to explore a couple of the anchorages across the channel on South Bruny Island. It's a beautiful day here at South Bruny Island and we're back on the hunt again. We're gonna go look for some seafood. Let's see what we bring back. So what do you think we're gonna find here? Lots and lots of kelp. Lots of kelp? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've got no local knowledge of anywhere we go. We just, <laughs> just got to jump in and see, don't we? Yeah. Trust to Providence.
was a, a fairly successful little outing. Yeah, definitely. I think we were in the water for 20 minutes in the sunshine. Reached our bag limit. Yep, got nice. our bag limit. Five abalone each. Five abalone each. That is plenty. Shiny. Shiny and crying. <laughs> Local seagulls are a bit fussy. They don't want abalone guts. <laughs> yeah, right. They just thought that we were going to be um, gutting fish, I suppose. But as soon as they saw that it was abalone, they were like, meh. Huh. Alright, as we're sailing around Bruni Island, we've come to a little offshoot partridge island. There's no people living here anymore, but evidence of them is here, and particularly an apple tree and it's about the right time for apples, so we're going to have a look. These apples are yummy. I approve. <laughs> some of the nice big ones with a good blush have been eaten by some of the local birds. Mm. <laughs> there's also a lot of roses around, and there's rose hips, but these ones aren't very tasty. Sometimes they can be really delicious fruit. And also, there's plenty of blackberries too. Really right. <laughs> We're going to cook up the blackberries and the apples that we collected the other day at Partridge Island just for breakfast. I'm just going to make like a deconstructed crumble because we don't have an oven. So I put some, and also gluten free too, because we don't have much flour. I put some seeds and nuts in here, and a little bit of cinnamon. And I'm just going to use my little, this is a spice grinder, and we use it a lot. It's a really great tool on the boat. Lit our metho stove. And I'm just putting about a tablespoon of ghee in the fry pan. If you're wondering what ghee is, it's clarified butter. So it's butter with the milk solids removed. Um, it doesn't go rancid, so you can have it out of the fridge. And we just love it. We think it's delicious. Which accounts for the massive bucket that we're scooping it out of. Yeah, this is a 1.8 kilogram tub that we got <laughs> in Hobart from the market. So I'm just tipping out the crumble into here. I just want to try and make it stick together a bit, so I'm going to use my fingers and try and make it into little balls, like you would if you were doing with butter and flour. I'm just going to add a bit of peanut butter to make the nuts stick together a bit better. Just need a bit, of, a bit more oils in there. That's much better. Mm. So we've got three ingredients so far. We've got Sunflower seeds, pecans and peanut butter. Oh, and geese, we've got four. And I'm just going to add a little bit of cinnamon as well. Smelling pretty good in here. What do you think of those chopping boards for the, uh, the space conscious cruiser? Yeah, they're good. Like this one, the middle one's good for if you've got a juicy steak or something like that or a juicy bit of fish because it's mm. got the dripping catcher and then this is a nice big one and then this i, I use the smallest one the, the most because it's easy to wash in the sink so they all slide in to one another pretty good i'm just going to turn the heat off this now it's just going to keep cooking a little bit in the warm fry pan but i don't want it to burn our apples are wild apples that we got from partridge island i'm just going to cut them i'm not going to bother peeling them they're really small Apple skin is really good for you, so we're just going to eat them with the skin on. Don't have to worry about those pesky pesticides. No, and I scrubbed them with a scrubbing brush when we brought them home because they had a little bit of scale on them, I guess because they're completely organic. What 
What are you doing with my whiskey? <laughs> I'm going to use it for some liquid for stewing the apples up. <laughs> hey, gads, woman. <gasps> oh my god. I didn't use that much. They're not very sweet, so I'm going to put some leatherwood honey in. Huh. They might hide the taste of the whiskey. Oh, okay. I'll just put sugar in then. What do you think about that? Mm. A little bit of sugar. No thanks, Turkish. You don't want sugar? It's sweet enough. Okay. I wasn't going to, but I have. I put a tablespoon of honey in and a tablespoon of ghee. Well, that smells better. It's caramelizing. You're making caramel apples. Just putting the blackberries into the pan. So I'm just going to make like a, a blackberry sauce. I was going to put them in with the apples, but I think it's better to do them separately. I'm just going to heat up the blackberries and get the juices out and then give it a taste and see if it needs a bit of sugar or anything like that. So I just added a tablespoon of water to stop the sugars burning. A bit more pecan. Not the pecan. So it's looking pretty good. Are you excited to tuck in, Troy? No way, man. <laughs> Blackberry and apple crumble with uh, our homemade yogurt. Don't forget the whiskey. Beer. Oh, with whiskey apples. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so not bad for a forage. Not bad. What's the verdict? It's really nice. And the best thing is, there's more. <laughs> That's our favourite flavour. More. Thanks for watching the video this week and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.